Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Yes, we are on the floor. I am so sorry, but we're definitely going to start on the floor because this thing weighs 52 kilos. And that is only that one. <laughs> this one is a Bolin Reo Logic, uh, a Reo Meter. And uh, what this one here is measuring is absolutely fascinating stuff. Let me see if I can get some light on this main unit here. And there's, of course, a lot of reasons why it is so heavy. So I'm going to sit down here on the floor and try and explain a little bit about what it is doing. It is measuring, it is capable of measuring deformation of all sorts of uh, complex liquids or soft solids. And it is doing it by many different fantastic things that I haven't really understood completely how it works. But I think you put in your test sample in here or you have it in something else where you screw it in here there's actually a thread so there's a test sample thingy you put in here is what I would assume right I haven't got all of uh, the parts and there's something missing that screws here and that goes down to the to the sample and then this whole top unit here see you can just screw this down it is insanely smooth the way that it is moving and as you can imagine when it goes down to the to the test sample you have this measurement device here and this is from 0 to 12 millimeters when you there's no battery in this one so when this one touches this of course this one is supposed to be mounted maybe at a height maybe that is a some sort of a calibration thing right so you have it here so you can recreate the same test all over so that is what I would assume right and then you can go down to your test sample and then there is some sort of an interface here where you can screw some sort of a test thing that goes to your test sample and then this whole device here can actually move I don't know if you can see this moving a little bit left or right and then so you got those two finger screws here where you can adjust where are we and then this see this long arm here goes to a sensor of movement that is in here and if I move this one see I can move the trigger point of that sensor and that sensor goes to the cable that goes to a electronic board uh, interface kind of stuff down here and uh, yeah we got some compressed air going in here actually on the top and on the bottom of that unit maybe that is to preload or pre-move this or to make it float i have no idea yet but let's look see here is the air that goes up into that device that is a little bit interesting and in here there's some sort of a piston that can, let me screw the hole top unit up and, and all those bearings and all that kind of stuff here is super super solid if I try and move this with all my force and energy there's definitely no slip slap anywhere it's just super super nice and stable so let me crank this all the way up to the top so we can see down in there there's a piston down here right 
and see there's a steering groove of something like that. So that means the test sample goes down in this test groove or steering groove, so it's not going to go around. So that is a thing. And I bet this piston kind of thing goes up or down with this system down here. Oh, I'm crawling down on the floor here. But anyway, let me show you what is going on here. I want to disassemble this thing in a minute and see if we can get a little bit closer look. But there will be a very big bearing here and some sort of a pulley system to probably some motors and some gears and stuff. And look at that one. See? Something that senses the tension of what is going on here, right? So that is interesting as well. And here is a label. Let me move the camera a little bit around. Lund Sweden. And then you can see the type number of the sensor unit. And uh, oh yeah, look at those. Ooh. We got some isolated I don't know, hoses that goes to maybe a pump or some water cooling thingy. I really have no clue what the heck this thing is doing down here, but it's full of pulleys and motors and gears and stuff. And a little, oh, let me get over here. The power controller board or something like that, right? So let me see if I can pull this thing to pieces and let's investigate it a little bit more. The other unit here is probably just a computer, but it's not only a computer because you see some amplitude, oops, and some torque adjustments. And then that's kind of... And on the back here, oh, let me turn it like this. So this is the electronic unit of this BRSVOR unit. And I also got a cable that made with this connector. And then it goes um, to a connector on this unit. Let me show you. So this is the back side of this whole unit. And down here, it mates with this super nice military connector. And this one is probably vacuum or high pressure or air, water or whatever it is. I have no clue. We got three of them. And somewhere like screwed. And this one is just cut. So definitely this unit was just trashed and just thrown in the bin. You can even see the big nasty mark here for throwing it into the bin. But let me see if I can tear it a little bit apart so we can see how this is designed. So now the cover is off and we can see a little bit more of the internal parts of this fancy, fancy machine. Wow, huh? That is definitely some funky, funky thingy. Maybe they are solid stainless steel. I don't know. That could definitely explain some of the weight. But also this is, what, 15 millimeter steel as well, right? And what is that? It's 10, 9. Here is 12 millimeter. And this is also solid. And I mean, this is, I don't know if you can see this, how thick that stuff is. <laughs> oh, this is some mechanical construction, but all sorts of a, what is that? Servo. 
So there's the sour motor, right? And then we got gearboxes or resolvers or all sorts of stepper motors or funky stuff indeed. Yeah, I really would like to see what is going on here. Here is also some sort of a sensor. There's a lot of slip slap and all things, but I can't. <clears throat> oh, we got four wires going to this motor. And those four wires goes here. And then what is that? A little relay. And that will be the water or cooling or some kind of stuff. We got three of them. And they go to the test test chamber or something like that, right? So this is probably for temperature. I mean, what is all this? And why is this wire? like that i definitely want to take some of this away because it is just way way too heavy to put up on my table this is 52 kilos and there's definitely no way that i will be able to lift this so but what if i <clears throat> what if i divide it here so i mean i definitely want to take this apart somehow that is my next quest and then we can probably lift this up i feel this is going to be a very long night i am like spending a half an hour on every little piece that i take out i mean it is just really really smart the way that it is assembled and you need to spend quite a lot of time figuring out every little detail so here's a little locking see for this one and then there's another one down here i'm not able to figure out how to get that one up and on top of that one there was a stainless steel cap I mean, this one weighs like a half a kilo. It is really, really heavy. And the way that this fits, it is just amazing. The tolerances. <laughs> well done. Everything is made of stainless steel. Super, super heavy stuff. Still got all my fingers and I still got all my nails. Well, yeah, I must say that I kind of just hurt myself a little bit, but that's how it is. And this is just some really cool details and bearings. It's just Everything here is just made to the highest type of, of quality. I really like it. Bearings and stuff all over the place. I'm trying to see how much I can take away and then still be able to in, inspect all the cool kind of things. What have we got down here? Is this some sort of a sensor or is it a brake system or what exactly? Or is it just like a torque kind of thing? I don't know. It looks a little bit like a brake, right? So there's a brake release kind of system. That is at least what I think so far. See, here's also a motor. And that motor is connected together with that servo motor. So that is a little bit odd. Why would you do that? 
Mm-hmm. Interesting. Ooh, look at that. So there is a torque kind of thing, right? Something is going on. Yeah, I am actually getting a little bit of progress, slowly, but yeah. We get further and further. So this one just spins freely. And that quite interesting how that works. Uh -huh. It's an electrical clutch. Not a brake, but a clutch. She see this one here is definitely not connected to that one, right? But when you power this up, those two magnets They're gonna engage, right? And then you got a clutch. That is weird. But that is definitely how it's it is made and geared and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, this um electronic circuit board here is very, very simple. All I see is some power transistors and a little bit of op amps and stuff. Not a lot. And that is controlling the the motor and some relay. So it's probably just forward, back, done deal. Super, super simple. I haven't yet figured out what that unit is doing yet, but we are going to get there. This one is getting loose. But I can't get it up because of that one is in the way. So, yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, those big solid steel bars. If you've ever thought about why stuff like this is always made like that. So there's a cut down here. That is for stability. Because when you screw something like this to a plate that's flat like this, then you get... A much better stability because you are only connected to the outside diameter compared to if it was flat it will much easier just go like that right so this is much much better you always see people do this first time I'm able to rotate this thing so now we can see the bottom of this unit but here we can see all the gearings and stuff a lot better. Beautiful. So we got another one of those clutches. Got quite a lot of them actually. I was hoping to be able to get this big solid steel piece. Maybe I can get this out. Because I think it's only... Yeah, look at that. I am actually getting a little bit forward. But now it's a few hours later. And so this fancy thing here is on the loose. And see, there's a little sexy position sensor in here as well. So this, this is more or less the same kind of position sensor thingy. And then those two, is it cooling pressure? Kind of, what is that exactly? Pneumatics, hydraulics kind of thingy. And we got three of them. Maybe only two, right? But there is another one down there. But that one, I haven't f figured out where that one goes. Okay, that's the blue one. 
So that is Phenomatics. Uh, but those are super stiff. I can't really move them. Oh yeah, by the way, those steel rods, they are solid. I, I can barely lift them <laughs> from the floor. They are that heavy. I'm not actually going to try and do it right here because you're just going to think I'm a tiny little baby girl, but I'm telling you, those are heavy. <laughs> oh, what a... Why is it that? I think it has something to do with the micrometer resolution of things. It has to be something with that because this unit got some really, really fancy smancy specifications definitely i've been reading a little bit on the internet and it is definitely super super nice stuff and i'm tr still trying to get this one loose but i need to go and access those i, I mean i need to cut this anyway can i really do that all this is hydra hydraulics, so that is high pressure oil that goes through these two, and it goes into this cylinder in each side. So that means somehow this one is able to do some kind of a motion either rotation or up down kind of stuff using hydraulics so that is definitely a thing here it was all oily and leaky here so probably i can unscrew it here and get those out and then get everything out but i'm like completely soaked with this kind of stuff now so i'm definitely getting deeper and deeper inside this uh, unit and now you can see the hydraulics and then there is this oh the black wire here is definitely a sensor probably temperature right and then what exactly is going on here is what I'm trying to figure out then there's this sensor and then this black unit is probably just a um, like a piston inside a cavity kind of movement damper that is what i think because i haven't seen any wires coming out of this unit so that's probably just for dampening and stability so that looks a little bit like that could be the thing yeah but i'm trying to dig my way all the way into that unit here and then I did take out the two hydraulics. That was a difficult task. So, yeah. Let's play a little bit more. See? Got both of the hydraulics. And the little angles away. And then we had this little temperature sensor in here. Because everything is done mechanically by this kind of system. So I actually think at the moment, this hydraulic is just for temperature regulation and stability. And the reason why they're not using water is just simply because it's gonna cause corrosion if it's leaking and uh, hydraulic oil is just not going to do that. It's just gonna lubricate everything and it's not gonna cause any stuff like that this is just my guess so far also i had a little breakthrough with this black unit here it is a vibration sensor thingy because look we have this little cable here that one it's going into the other side of this unit and there's a label and all that kind of stuff but i'll get into that uh, later when i can get this out see it is they even glued it here for better vibration stability so how is this interconnected with that one i still haven't figured that out 
Maybe there's a screw somewhere, but it's just hidden. Nah, it can't be. <sighs> How do you think about that, huh? I think I made it. Those boxes are not motors. They are called something about motors. Well, that is just the company that makes those units. That is a gearbox. And look at that. See? If you look at the that one. Okay, so this is the output. Can you see what happens? So definitely... We got ourselves a gearbox. And I think it's probably even explained here the ratio and all that kind of stuff, right? And the other one here is more or less the same, right? I think this is 100 to 1. Maybe that is what this means, right? So that will be the gearboxes, and I still need to prove what this unit is down there. And we got quite a lot of those. See, here we got two of them, and that is what's going to go on my table in a minute. And we're going to go and play with those. I think it's a really, really nice kind of brake clutch kind of thing. But don't you think that? So that means this is free running no matter what, right? Ah, it's down there, right? Yeah, look at that. So the moving part is here. But it's not connected to any of the other free running wheels unless you put power and then you're gonna have a connection I think that is pretty pretty cool let me play with that oh yeah that one is also super nice I really like that motor here so it's a servo motor and we got four wires to it I think this is what we call a Step a motor or something like that, that, right? Why are we having two green wires that also goes in there? I think those are three wires for the rotor and one for the stator or something like that, right? Can't wait to play with that one as well. Oh, yeah. That is a position sensor. See? And there is a little piece of metal that moves in here and there's probably some electrical or optical kind of sensor in here but I can't see anything we got those two steel wires that goes to this moving joint a frictionless moving joint that is really nicely made and in that end of that one we had this black unit here and you know what that is that is a mini shaker from danish boil and care and it says impotence and how much it's moving and all that kind of stuff so this one can create vibration so that is what it is this is actually a very good score it's very heavy so i can make myself a little vibration unit with this one and that is definitely what I want to do so that one is going for my super saver box of goody goody stuff from the, from uh, Boiling Care that is a company I really love they make good good stuff let's talk a little bit about the sensors look at that so this is aluminium on a steel rod that moves inside two coils. I think I can actually see the the copper wires in here um, due to the color that's uh, visible through the plastic. And this is how it works. We got two 
uh, coils and we put in AC and then we detect how much AC we get out. So it's actually an eddy current position detector. And the cool thing about this is that it doesn't really matter the position like this sideways, but this way it's super, super sensitive and very, very accurate. So that is a very, very good way to do this. Now I'm going to try and play with the, the clutches. Oh, this is actually a little bit funny. This clutch here, don't work. <laughs> I think I found the bug in this unit. So there's definitely something wrong with this one. Well, look at that. Then I just take another one that's more or less similar in uh, design and see, there is a... Uh, there's no grip here, right? So I'm going to try and put it right here so we can see what I'm doing. So I spin this one, right? Oops. And now they are connected together. And this is 24 uh, volts, uh, 200 milliamps. So that is five watts. And then if you try and grab these, really? So they're perfectly Oh, what? Oh, that is cool. And then, see? It goes from super grip to absolutely no grip. And I think if you look really, really careful, let me try and zoom in a little bit. Like that, right? Let me show you. Can you see, see this little brake disc? That is the only thing that moves. Yeah. So that's definitely how that works. See this? Oh, this one is much, much more fun. Let me try and play with that so one. Let's leave it. Uh -huh. And then they... Okay. It's supposed to be like that, right? There's a little click feeling. Alright, so that works as well. Fantastic! I'm still trying to figure out the, the bottom part here, removing all the set screws and all that kind of stuff. So here's the electromagnetic clutch thing from uh, for the bottom part and I think what it's doing is it's connecting those two together here right this so the position sensor and the vibration motor with that one so this one rotates the the test I haven't that yet figured out how to how to take this out. I've been removing set screws, so I thought. So here's another set screw. Ooh, oh dear! <laughs> this unit is just going to drive me absolutely nuts. I don't know how many hours <laughs> I spent dissecting this kind of thing yet. But there's like it's full of ball bearings, and so that was the clutch. And this is of course made from steel so it will work with the magnetics and all this is aluminium and it's super nice frictionless kind of or slipless kind of ball bearing and then there's this and I removed all the set screws and I'm just not able to figure out how to disassemble hmm. well well so now we are out in the the dirty lab. So now I got everything disassembled. And see, up here in this end, we had, of course, all this stuff mounted there as well, right? And then I was, of course, hammering on this piece to get everything out. And then what happens when you hammer on stuff, it kind of splatter out. And that prevented 
this thing from sliding out and that was locking everything else from getting out so <laughs> that was stupid so of course i had to use this little baby to uh to fix that so now we are out and uh i can see this rotation thingy here for the for the sample so this is the sample chamber and uh we got bearings we got o-rings even some lubrication for o-rings so this was on top of that one and then nice isolation outside just to hold it and to make it look real nice and here is the hydraulics and that is the temperature sensor so this is this whole chamber is made like this see just for temperature regulation or to heat it or to cool it and to stuff do stuff like that so that is all there is to it and it is of course with o-rings here and also in the bottom and all that kind of stuff and then you can still rotate and uh heat or cool and uh, do cool stuff so yes we managed to figure all that out nice oh there was actually one more funny thing here this is of course steel right but this i think you can actually see the color but this is brass and it is nickel coated or something like that right so it's got a different color to it i just took the other one and grinded it a little bit and definitely it shines like brass haha -ha. and i kind of collect brass just for a fun thing to see how many kilos of brass i can <laughs> i can salvage over a year so that is just a, another funky uh, side hobby i got so those are definitely going to add up to my little brass collection cool let's have a look in here see if i can get a little bit of light see that is the bearing is that copper so why would you use copper but this one looks like brass so this is a little bit weird got two different bearings remember we had the steel rod going here right so that will be the bearings and it's done exactly the same in both of them and that's the nylon and that is the big bad thread and look at it i don't know if i can show this but the nylon is completely cracked all over the place yeah see so this can't be good and i'm trying to see if i can get in here into this little funny thing we got in here with the air what is that doing still haven't figured that out yet mm hmm interesting I actually think I figured this out here's the air and as you see it's just split into a bottom and a top part of this system and that was the sensor and you could can zero the position of the sensor so by blowing air in here pumping air at high pressure on each side of this bearing i think this is like an air pillow bearing kind of friction three thing so that means when you're rotating your sample you can measure viscosity and all that kinds of things super super accurate because you're just hovering on air without any friction isn't that cool i haven't figured out exactly what this center iron see it's completely corroded and then to prevent this from spinning all the way around we have this end stopping down here so but that got to be our pillow bearing kind of thing that is the why would you do that any other way really but i want to i want to see if i can go in there 
So I got this piece out. And it is actually completely corroded, as you can see here, when I'm touching stuff. And this also explains why it's not moving so good. And this piece of metal here is just this zeroing spring. So instead of having a wound spring, it's just a single piece of spring. That's just how it is. Should be able to replace it somehow. Yeah, simply by... Yeah, yeah, you see? Lose this set screw and that one, put in a new one, and then you're good to go. Could be cool to go in here and have a look what exactly this phenomenal thing here is doing, but let's see if I'm guessing right. It's always fun to guess and see if it's right or wrong. So that is a little bit of a special springy thingy. So of course you can replace it, but it's looking a little bit kind of special, right? This one couldn't hardly move, but I've been sitting here and massaging it a little bit, and look now. See how nice and smooth it's moving, and there isn't really a lot of uh, friction or anything like that. It's just going really nice and smooth. So it could be fun to uh, to have a look inside this unit. That is definitely now my next task. Don't you just love it when you guess right? So air comes in and goes to this piece here. And air comes in here. And it goes through this. It's like a material full of tiny, tiny little holes. I don't know if it's easy to see. But this is also what happens here. And then air is also in here. And this is definitely an air bearing so this whole unit is just floating on a pillow of air zero friction bearing that is what we got here and by the way those two parts they're made of brass and brass is just the most accurate stuff you can machine in and when you put those two together there is this I don't know if you can hear this, but they just... <laughs> oh, I love it when stuff is so nice and accurate. But that is an air bearing. This is definitely a keeper. This is a funny, funny unit. I love it. I'm so happy for all those fancy, fancy, funny, funny units I got. So let's talk about the computer unit control box kind of thing. I just removed the top cover and I really had the idea it was a PC because look at those plug-in cards. They're definitely PC plug-in cards. And from outside, it really, really looks like a PC. Well, that is definitely where it stops. It's all completely special designed for this product. Maybe this outside casing here and maybe the lid was initially also used for our, some kind of a PC. But it's definitely reused for this one, see there's there is a like a little plug-in module here, and then there is this kind of plug-in here, and then that converted to a PC PCB card plug-in kind of unit, and then there's a power supply in here, and it is not a switch mode power supply. If we look real careful, nah, we can't see that, but there's a right transformer down in there but I will have a little look at that then I found this 
piece of paper and this was probably glued here so it says exactly what the different modules are called clutch enable sign ramp temperature utility card adc card torque demodulator empty yeah that one is empty amplitude demodulation and then servo board great so now we know exactly what the different boards are called so now we'll pluck them out and let's have a look what are they doing oh we got some leds and it's a little bit funny some of them go that way and some go the other way definitely want to have a look at that so that's a lot of electronics inside this unit so let's look at the units and i'm so happy i found this piece of paper that tells us exactly what the, all the different modules they are so this is the clutch enable and all this is doing is just feeding 24 volts to all the solenoids to all the clutches and then it's of course um, a parallel bus interface with some address chip enable kind of thing so there is a a uh, yeah a computer data bus and uh, each board they access this uh, computer data bus uh, on their individual addresses and all that kind of stuff so it is more or less like a computer interface kind of thing so the next is a sign ramp that one is actually a little bit interesting so here's what i found this is an intel 8253 and i looked this up to be a programmable timer so i bet this one generates all the different pulses for the counters so the counters goes to eproms with a um like a sine wave look up table and the data goes to three four bit drivers and that is to sync the data from the counters and eproms to be exact and then it goes to an that is a 12-bit DA converter. And they're using the same DA converter on all the other boards, by the way. And then some op amps. So here you go. A signal generator. And then the next unit is temperature. So this is a temperature sensor. I mean, really? And it's not only the temperature sensor, but it's also the main CPU card. And it is actually very, very complicated the way that this is made. We got all the different analog circuits. Oh, and that one is really interesting, by the way. So that's a digit digital uh, voltmeter uh, chip. And then this is the main CPU. 68 hg 11 microcontroller that is the first microcontroller i ever programmed and uh, then we got a um, programmable logic and another programmable logic and then dual port ram normal sram and an eprom for the program for the microcontroller and then we got 12 bit DAC. So there's a lot of stuff on this board, not just a temperature sensor, no way. And then this one is the utility card, but it is not just a normal, I don't know what is a normal utility card. Again, we got two 12-bit decks some op amps and uh, the bus interface chips for yeah, accessing the data bus. And then where are we now? That was the utility. Then we got the ADC card. 
Here we go, another 80. So that is a 12-bit AD converter. And that one is an instrumental instrumentation amplifier precision goody goody stuff. And then the last board that was will be torque dim. Well, maybe that is demodulation, right? And for torque and amplitude, and those two pots they are connected to the two different uh, boards. I just pulled the the connectors, and those two boards look more or less the same. And now they're using different connectors for the back plane. So that is the torque. Probably a full bridge, right? And then all the analog circuits for that. And the other one is more or less the same. Oh, okay, not those relays for multiplexing and stuff like that. Quite interesting. And the last one is called a servo board. But it really looks like a... Just, okay, so this is a power up amp. And some normal op amps and stuff like that. And a fan going directly to that one because this is analog, linear kind of stuff. And that will be the two BNC connectors going for this. Not even shielded cables. What do you think about that? And the power supply, I'm still trying to figure out how to get the power supply out. So I did, of course, get the power supply out. And yes, exactly like I said, a linear power supply with a big, heavy toroid transformer. This one is from Powerbox. I can't see anything written here on the output. And that's because we got some custom outputs, probably... And uh, down here, we, I don't know if we can see that, but we got some regulators mounted right here. Very close to those capacitors. And all the rectifier bridges, except that one and the tiny little one there. So the ones that get hot, they are mounted on the ooh, aluminium chassis. So that is a very good thermal design. And then a mains filter. Really? Is that necessary <laughs> for a linear power supply? Can you imagine all the noise and stuff from this going all the way through here and then out of that filter? Or is this filter to prevent outside noise from going in and affecting anything in here? I mean, really? There's supposed to be super, super good isolation in a power supply like this especially if it was made with inductors or resistors between two sets of capacitors uh, between the rectifiers and then the regulators then you can really really make a super good isolated filtered power supply and this way you don't need this thing here but that looks like a very beautiful power supply indeed well, I don't have a lot more to add to this uh, video. It's already way too long. So I will say thank you very much for watching and please come again soon. Bye bye.